my friend, it's Pat Sloan here, and it is Block Wednesday. What's in your closet? So what do you think the topic is for today? One, two, one, two. Okay, it is patching our clothing. We are a frugal lot, we human beings, and there are just some things that you want to patch up. You don't want to, uh, you know, get rid of it yet because it's still good. It just might have a little hole or need a little mending. And so patching up your clothing is the theme for what's in our closet. And I have this block, which has a bonus applique basket because a mending basket, right? You have to have a mending basket. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it's all about. Now I'm not going to work on any sashing this week. The block will go. This is block 13, so it will go right next to the one we did last week, uh, the leisure suits, which never needed patching. I don't think. I don't think those things will last forever if you find one, forever. So we also have. Um, I just did a side by side for this block and here you can see like if you have the center of this is six inches finished and so that is a great way to showcase some of the fabric that you're working with. So I am going to actually sew this block on the featherweight on Duchess on my red Duchess because I've got the walking foot on the Solaris down here. I've got the walking foot on it uh, to do though to do some uh, quilting of this those three small pieces I just don't want to take the walking foot off uh, and I've got thread color on there for that and everything so I thought I'm just going to fire up the Duchess and so I have her on the back side here we'll go over there and uh, I'll show you the fabrics and we'll sew sew the block so here we are on the back side with the Duchess my red featherweight uh, and I'll do a couple close-ups here so you can just see what's going on and then I'll just sew a tiny bit Here's my setup for the Duchess on the back side. So I've got the Solaris over here and the Duchess here. Cords, cords, of course, everybody has cords, right? And I'm using the gorgeous metal coneflower uh, stands, thread stands. So I like to use these regular size spools, which on the machine you can buy adapters and stuff, but I already own this uh, and you might want one too. So they're absolutely gorgeous. So I will be flipping the switch here and also for a few minutes on camera. I'm going to fussy cut this for the center and I just wanted to tell you on most rulers you will find the center marked somehow. This one is creative grid six and a half inch ruler and there's a white line with a bullseye right in the middle there. So that I will put in the center of one of these. I can't use that one because it's not it's not in far enough so I'm gonna to have to go into the bigger part of the fabric but I will put that bullseye right in the middle of that medallion so to do the half square triangles of course I have to go kind of old school because I don't have my laser on here the guide beam but that's okay listen to her doesn't she sound pretty so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, sew these. If you have a featherweight, tell me about it in the comments below, or if you want to share a picture of your featherweight at the YouTube channel, just uh, not the YouTube channel, <laughs> the Facebook group, just go ahead and share your beauty. All right, the Duchess and I will work on this block and we'll be right back. Well, she sewed beautifully, the Duchess. Here's the block. Oh. Look, look at the fussy cutting. Ah, so excited. So I'm not going to put the mending basket on mine, but I think it's just so cute with the fussy cutting. Love that piece of fabric in my drawing room. This, it's just so fun to work with. All right, remember to go visit our ambassador Kendall at his YouTube channel because he's sewing all the block Wednesdays, plus many other things on his channel. And I know he has, I know he has things coming up that you'll want to know about. So check it out. And, uh, before we do the parade, we have some sweet mail. Got this from Jenny in uh, Indiana, I think. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? And she lives near the Gummy Bear Factory in the U.S. here, the Albany's. Yeah, this one. And so she sent me and Greg each a little bag of these that are the chocolate covered ones. Yum! She also sent me some sweet, look, look, 
vintage sewing machine fabric and a darling little notepad. I use these notepads so much. And of course, it all came in this really sweet bag. Oh my goodness. Mwah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let me put this over here. Okay. So we're going to do the a, a parade of your blocks from last week. Leisure suits for everybody. Alice kicks it off with her Christmas block, but she does have a story that says that her prom date wore a powder blue a leisure suit. And he did wear a tie with it. So there you go. There you go. You need a powder blue one now. <laughs> <laughs> it's gorgeous. Carol's block. I love these fabrics. She said she went a little bit different, took the corners and used an additional fabric. So you can see how that looks if you were thinking of it. I, I really like that. And I love that yellow. That's my favorite. Charlene's beautiful, beautiful blues. And then all of them together where she's also got pink in the mix and some really dark maybe teal. I'm not really sure what the dark color is, but it's it's so pretty. I've got a lot of family portraits here today. Sherry's with her beautiful blues. I like those stars and then all together where she has um, purples and pinks and raspberry color. Oh, really, really nice. Cindy's. <laughs> Look at the turtles, fussy cut turtles and dots, polka dots, and then all together. They look so fantastic, fantastic. Delia's uh, is working with stripes. She said she had a lot of fun working with stripes. <laughs> you can see she messed around to do this so that she did not cut the stripe or cut the other fabric. You did it. Plus, I see you're using my fabric for your white. Diane's is pink and black. This is such a classic combination. And all together with lots of peach in the mix. Beautiful. Oh, black and white. Everything is just amazing. That quilt's going to be so cool. We got Diane, another different Diane, said second Diane, with these little houses. I love them. This is so pretty. Just cute, cute fabric. I think that's a ginger burr fabric. And a third Diane today with pink, black, and gray and a polka dot background. Just love it. Love that gray. Karen says... <laughs> She goes, she said, the gang's all here. Look at those faces, all the sea animals. She has, I, I think I remember, yours has a lot of sea animals. I can tell. that They're so sweet, so sweet. And Kathy's, she has got the cars. They are so fun. And then all of hers together. Look at this. Isn't this amazing? Oh, Kathy, it is so good. Loving it so much. We got Melissa. Oh, this is her left side. This is Ambassador Melissa. So she's been sharing her blocks and she shared the the full left side and I had to show it to you. So good. Love the bears. Patsy's pink and blue. So soft and pretty. Robin's. Oh, this looks like spring. Looks like a spring garden. And she did four different backgrounds on the block. So if you're thinking of that, wondered how it looked, there you go. Look at this cool money fabric, or stamp, I'm sorry, stamp fabric that uh, Sharon has. Ah, oh, and the text print, super good. I love it. Sylvia, whoa, look at the faces. She fussy cut, and then the birds on the blue. Wonderful, wonderful. So just a few more. Vicky's cozy, gorgeous browns, and that background fabric. That's so pretty. And Wendy's beautiful soft peaches and whites with little pops of blue. And then from my solstice, this is my red and white that I did when I created my solstice quilt. And I used a different fabric in all four corners. Thank you everybody for sharing your blocks. It is so fun to see them. There are tons more. So you just want to go out there to the community, Quilt Along with Pat Sloan at Facebook. All right, I have a little uh, chat. Uh, there was things I was working on on Saturday, stuff that I was thinking about, and I filmed it. So let's take a look. So it is Saturday afternoon, about 3 o'clock, and I thought, you know, what, what do I want to work on? Do I want to start filming the Wednesday video? I just was, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it. I didn't feel like, ah, I thought I'd just like to do something different. <laughs> so, and actually... 
you know, what do I want to work on has got kind of a bigger uh, question for me as well. But I thought that might be fun to chat about. Might be fun. Let me know afterwards if it was fun. Uh, but I thought I would just get these three smaller pieces basted. And while I'm kind of pull them out, we'll look at them, get backings if they don't backings yet. And then I'll get them all three spray basted. But then we can talk a little bit about projects because as I've been telling you on these past few videos, I'm trying to uh, shift my balance of what I do. Um, now that I've kind of, uh, I don't know, the world has changed for me, you know, like things have just, are just a little bit different than they were a few years ago. And that's finally hitting me that, okay, yes, yes, now I can make some changes to what I do. Um, you know, maybe I'm a slow learner. Took me a while. But before we get to that, I've got these three projects that, need, that are small, that need basted, and I will probably quilt them all with the wave stitch, do a little zen quilting. What happens is about 9.30 at night, um, Greg's doing his radio stuff and watching stuff he wants to watch that I don't want to watch. And so I will come down and spend, uh, you know, like at 9.15 or so, uh, a half an hour or so sewing and then about 10 o'clock I usually play my Animal Crossing games or the video games which are you know an hour before I go to bed or I watch some videos that I want to watch <laughs> not not this not the stuff that he likes to, he likes really technical stuff which I don't mind some of that but you know not not as much so I need these kind of projects this is where am I going with this I need to I need these projects because they're mindless. I can run the wave stitch through the machine. Um, I actually could do them on the Sashiko machine, which is something I'm going to be pulling out, my Sashiko machine, the Baby Lock Sashiko machine, and playing around with it, which I have not done for a few years. Uh, and I need to do that. So they could be for that too. But one is the door banner, the tulip door banner. And so I've got this, I do not have backing. So I thought, well, what do I have from that um, mercantile? And I have this. It's pale pink. Yeah, so I think that's good. I don't, because this is all white, I don't want a dark background because it will kind of, even with a white batting, um, you know, and, and I'm going to put it on a red door, hanging on a red door. I thought I just need something that's lighter as the, as the layer behind the bat, you know, batting and then a lighter pink. So I think that'll be good. So I've got to cut that. I have to cut that. And then the other two are the canning jars, which I really want. I really want the canning jars, which has a, quite a few mushrooms. So I did, a lot of you have sent me mushroom fabric and this one I pulled the ones that had kind of a similar colorway. I just love it. And see these, that one, the tools are for my front door. This and the other one will fit in my kitchen where I have those little spools right now. So I believe this backing is made for it. It was folded inside. Yeah, it looks, it looks big enough. So I'll have to verify that. I think so. See, this is what happens when you leave it and you don't mark stuff and you don't say, you know, exactly what your, what your status is. I have a piece of batting I cut. And the other one is Breakfast Club. Oh, I see backing here too. I was afraid I didn't do it. Okay, so here's the Breakfast Club. And it's a little bit bigger than the canning jars. It just fits. I would have loved to put another border on this, but then I couldn't have put it in the kitchen. It would have been too big. And so I was just like, all right, we're just gonna sacrifice that other, the border. Uh, and then this was one of the fabrics our friends sent. And I believe that is also, I have to check it. I believe that is also good to go. And so the other thing is, did I pull, I pulled batting that I knew would be for two of those projects so I hadn't hadn't had the tulips done yet so I thought okay I think I think it'll work I think it's gonna work so I'm gonna have to check all that so what I might do here is I think I'm gonna go ahead and just check everything cut that backing and then I'll turn the camera on again on the ironing board while I'm kind of basting them and putting them together. And we'll chat a little bit about projects. So let me get set up.
I'm gonna leave that open because I just don't feel like having it dark in here. And I'm gonna put the camera down here on the ironing board so it'll have that backlighting <laughs> change. It's like if I shift it to the sides, if I get rid of some of the light, then I'm in the corner here. Okay, <laughs> you can see the beautiful ginger. <laughs> and I only have a few, I have three blooms and two that are fading out there. But yeah, it's a long run. It's like three, it'll be three and a half, almost four months uh, for that orchid, which I think is fantastic for my first orchid. Anyway, I have the uh, Breakfast Club based it, so we're gonna talk about that. But the thing is, is I have been thinking about, um, you know, what if I did a clean slate? That's what my one of my friends said. You know, think of your projects as a, I gotta put this timer on, <laughs> otherwise I talk too long, uh, as a clean slate. You know, like what projects would you wanna work on if you were just starting over? And I thought that is very freeing. That is such a freeing thought because I can think like that now. I don't have uh, my all my commitments and different things have changed over the years. Uh, and I, you know, now I'm in kind of a different place with what I can do with my quilt making and producing these videos. And so I've been thinking about that. So let's talk. One of the things is when I, okay, first of all, I'm, I'm doing spray basting 505 on my ironing board. I spray very close. I've done with this many times, but I'm just going to be doing this while I'm chatting with you about something else. So uh, <laughs> hang in there, hang in there. So I, over the years, you know, when I've been doing other things, like when I was writing books and doing heavy pattern development, you know, if I saw something cute, you know, I pretty much couldn't make it. I might think about it, I might save a picture of it, but I couldn't make it because I had deadlines and commitments for my own design work. And that was totally fine. But now I can do, I can do things. I'm just using a hot iron, steam. If you get the steam to come up, if there's no steam, that's fine too. Uh, I just like the way this works. So I have been thinking about doing a list. Well, I've started a very short little list so far of projects that I had seen prior. I thought, you know, I would really love to make that. I think it would be really fun uh, for, um, for whatever reason that particular one is fun, whether it is the design, whether it is the challenge. And some of those may be things that uh, you wouldn't be interested in making which is fine. It's okay, right? It's okay. Uh, so I might make things in the future that I'll show you the pattern, but if you don't want to make it, that's fine. You can just follow along and you can watch and I'll talk about usually color because that's my big thing, talk about color. Uh, and it'll be, it'll be fun because I am kind of excited to take this little bit of a um, fresh look, a fresh look at what I want to work on. You know, one of the interesting things too is I used to do a ton of applique in the beginning of my design career. That's what I did. I did applique. I didn't really do the other stuff that much. I did some patchwork, but mostly applique. And this breakfast club was the first time I kind of went back and did some, you know, an all applique project. And it was fun, but right now I don't see a ton of that in my future. I'm still enjoying doing patchwork and other things and really just enjoying designs that are already out there that I admire and I would like to make so that I can just make. I don't have to do all the hard work of figuring it out and putting it together. I mean, it's that's a large amount of energy and time spent to do the design work and then there's no product yet. I mean, there's no finished item. There's no playing with color. I mean, the, the fun part for me is playing with the fabric and playing with color. And that's, that only happens when I make a quilt. Playing with color and the fabrics never happens at a design phase for me. I mean, I know what the fabric might be sometimes, particularly if I was designing things for my books or my fabric lines, but 
it wasn't it's, it doesn't have the same satisfaction as working with physical fabric does for me um, and that's not the same some designers absolutely love the digital process it feeds their soul as much if not more than working with real fabric but I want to work with real fabric I love being able to put these blueberries in there just look at that look at that it's so cool so that is that is one of the things that I am making a list. So I am making a list of these, what do we call it, dream projects, my um, projects that would be take all these threads off. You've got a white background. You don't want all those threads shadowing through. Get them off of there. So, you know, for me, I want to create a, a list of dream projects that I will activate. And then it also means looking at older projects for ones that I'm not going to activate. <laughs> it's like they might have been on the list at one point, but I'm like, okay, that ship has sailed. Sometimes the ship sails. You have it on the list and now you know you not you're not in love with that anymore. You're not in love with spending the amount of time and energy to make it as originally as you originally were. The other thing too is that projects, you don't have to do the entire project to get satisfaction out of it. Sometimes you can just do part of the project, like I did the mercantile. I didn't do the whole thing. I didn't even do the border like the pattern, but I got great satisfaction out of making that number of blocks that I did. And that's the kind of thing too. It's like if a project's big, I'm most likely going to right size it to what I want to do now versus what the pattern has. You know, I'll just take portions of it, make smaller, maybe I'll make a different border, whatever. So that's another thing. Okay, so I thought this would be a fun little chat. If you are someone who is looking to sort of right size or reboot or clean slate, your list of projects that you want to do. Tell me about it here in the comments at YouTube. Uh, if you want to share it on my community page at Facebook, please always say that you're that you're referencing my YouTube video today. Say on past YouTube today, because otherwise people are like totally clueless what you're talking about. Um, that community is like four times bigger than this one, and that most of them do not watch the videos. <laughs> just the way it is. Uh, so, you know, it, it helps when you reference why you're talking about something, talking about projects, quilt projects. Remember, this is all quilt, quilt projects at the moment. I don't want to hear about your gardening projects or your, you know, canning or whatever. Um, you know, to keep it quilt related because otherwise uh, it gets declined because we have to keep everything quilt related. So that is a little chat, a little chat on projects. And now I'm going to base all three of these and I'll show it to you later this week on another day, maybe Thursday. Okay, I hope you really enjoyed kind of listening to that and leave me comments here at YouTube about what you're doing with your projects, how you're thinking about your projects because we shift in life. We go through into different phases and that's where I am. I'm kind of shifting my thinking and I'm working on that, that uh, clean slate list. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here is my uh, what's in your closet, the mending basket. So I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.